Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Sialik, and as promised, we've got a brand new show for you, chock full of deer hunting. Jordan will take us on a deer hunt with veterans in Jackson County, and I'll take you to Camp Grayling, where some veterans were helping out with an overpopulation of deer there. You won't wanna miss those stories. And we've got another deer hunt in store for you this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have another opening day story, actually, to kick off this week's show. Our own Gabe Van Warmer was down in the south central part of the Lower Peninsula on a really cool hunt with a buddy of his with a really nice big buck. You won't want to miss that. And I think we might have time for a bragging board on this week's show as well. Lots of good stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Walker's Creek event venue at Double D Ranch. Located in the central Michigan town of Lake, Walker's Creek offers an outdoor setting for weddings, corporate events, and more. Walker's Creek event venue, wcvenue.com. This year's firearm opener found me right around the corner from my house in Chiawassee County, filming with a good friend of mine, Ben Smith. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to visit Ovidelsi High School woodshop class many times. These guys have made everything from recurve bows to wood strip canoes. For many years, Everett Smith was the shop teacher at Ovidelsi. These days, his son Ben is now the instructor, but the projects haven't changed much. There's still a heavy emphasis on outdoor projects, which reflect the passions of the community of the rural high school. It's a epoxy table that's supposed to be maple syrup themed. Well, I'm still working on it, so... It's probably taken a year or so. The reason I got into this was because of my dad. Dad did this for 38 years, so I've been around this my entire life. And to come back to my community of Ovidelty is just a dream come true and just can't wait to teach my own kids here someday. So we do a, a fine woodworking, a woods one class. Uh, then we go into a woods two class, which allows the kids to just make things that they want to, ideas that they have, put it on paper, then build the complete project. We also do a residential building trades class where we do things like the gun blinds you see here behind us. We do uh, full barns, sheds, uh, and stuff. The cool thing about that, we do a product of, we draw it up first, two scale, uh, do a model, then we actually build the whole thing so the kids see it start to finish. Uh, we get them ready for the real world as best we can. Um, it's going to be a live edge epoxy coffee table, so the arrow is out of my first big buck with a bow and then shells are just different shells from guns that we've shot around the house so so that area you actually shot a deer with yep it's gonna be in your coffee table now yep that is great so right now we are gluing these two up to our pieces so these two pieces on the outside will be this part of the net and then this will be like the center of it 
right here. And then for the outside of the net right here, we just got done bending these strips. And then now we just gotta glue up our handle and our yep. thing together and then sand. So I'm moving out soon. So it's gonna be for me and my boyfriend. Um, I just want a bigger bed. I don't like my small bed. So I thought, why not do a king size? And I just really like this type of wood. I love the different colors in it. So I'm just kind of really excited about it. Just started the footboard not too long ago, so. Over the last few years, the program has begun to build high quality deer blinds using residential construction techniques. This allows the kids in the program to learn important building skills within the school without having to go out on the job site. But the skills learned will still be the same. From reading blueprints, figuring out cost estimates, and understanding framing techniques to the actual build, these youth learn real life skills. Ben invited me out with him on the firearm opener to check out one of the blinds they had built. Okay, today we're out on a buddy's property. Uh, we've been seeing quite a few deer and some nice bucks. We're going to try to drop a buck and a couple does to help him out on the farm today. Got a 450 Bushmaster topped with a Leopold uh, 5 HD uh, 3 to 15 by 44 scope with the CDS, so it should be the ticket today. Before the sun even broke the horizon, I could see why this farmer wanted some deer taken off his land. There were several deer on either side of us, and I could only imagine what kind of destruction that took place in his crops each and every year. Just passed on a nice two and a half year old eight or nine point um, biggest buck I've ever passed in my life so that was super exciting to watch that thing come in and hopefully we're gonna see something a little bigger today so on this particular property we're hunting a buddy's uh, piece or his farm here and you know right now we have about 30 40 deer easily out in the field and uh, just trying to help get those numbers down because they do just such a huge number on the, the crops here So right now we got about a dozen does coming out. Um, no bucks right now, but just a lot of fun being in a nice warm gun blind on a cold day like today. As the morning went on, the snow really started getting heavy and the movement slowed down to a trickle. We decided to run grab a quick bite to eat down the road and get right back into the blind for the evening sit. But on our way back, we spotted a nice buck already on the field. We got a game plan together to sneak through some tall weeds to get a crack at him. So we just went out, got a bite to eat, got a real good cinnamon roll and a burger and uh, just check in a field that we were just in and there's a monster out there. So let's see what happens here on a little sneak up. Before we could get ready, he turned and followed a doe back into the bedding area. So we took our time, eased out to where we could see where he went back in, and about 30 minutes later, he came back out onto the field. He went down. Oh man. Can't believe that worked out. We were able to sneak up on him, make a nice shot on him, went right down. Oh, I can't wait to put my hands on him. Oh, that's a nice buck. Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So I uh, 
I'd say probably my second biggest buck, but I passed a lot of deer this year and just haven't had shots and to finally see it uh, come true today and, and hit something like this and shoot something like this, it's just, just an amazing experience, especially to share it with a friend, but look at the body on him and everything. Wow. <laughs> oh, look at the base, the mass on the base there and everything. To have such a slow year, which my wife tagged out, my daughter tagged out on getting her first buck, and I was getting razzed by all my friends, but I'm happy now, so. Thanks to Ben for letting me tag along hunting with him. It was truly an unforgettable hunt in the snow. A few weeks ago, just before the firearm deer season began, a group of veterans had an incredible opportunity to head to Camp Grayling to help harvest some of the deer there that are overpopulated. Last month, a group of our veterans gathered at Camp Grayling for the second annual veterans deer hunt during archery season here. Matt Kleitch was on hand to give us the lowdown on the event. Yeah, we're on Camp Grayling. We're on uh, the Contonement area, which is about 1,200 acres. Um, Camp Grayling is 147,000 acres total. This area is fenced. This is where most of our buildings are and barracks and offices and things like that. Uh, most of this area is part of the Hanson Game Refuge, so we actually can't hunt um, on most of this land because of the refuge. With the available acreage we have, like I said, to put hunters, we're only able to host a maximum of 10, just because uh, we can't fit any more than that on that limited land. With the refuge situation, you know, the deer population here is really skyrocketed, so um, we have an overabundance of deer. You know, anything we can do to, to harvest some deer out of this population is going to help with that. Um, there are a couple blocks of land here that we can hunt um, that are not part of the refuge, so we're kind of limited in where we can put hunters. We're in a what I would call an urban environment. We're surrounded by buildings, roads, uh, parking lots, vehicles, things like that, so a uh, little bit tricky, you know, to coordinate and logistics of this, but uh, but we're able to pull it off and then keep everybody safe and have a good time. So I'd be tagging along with veteran Josh Bauman for the hunt. Josh was assigned to hunt area number 10, which happened to be this hydraulic lift blind on loan from the DNR at Sleepy Hollow State Park. Josh was pretty excited to be here. So I was in the Coast Guard for 27 years, uh, four years at the Academy and then 23 years of actual Coast Guard time serving uh, our country. So for most of my uh, career. I, uh, I bounced around, but I'd say my, my primary duty, I was a helicopter pilot for the Coast Guard. So I flew uh, H-65s as a uh, rescue helicopter pilot. And uh, after that, I spent some time on some ships and uh, a lot of time in offices uh, flying a desk. <laughs> the veterans here at Camp Grayling followed the standard DNR rules for archery season for this hunt, and all were using crossbows. Josh headed out to the blind for the first morning hunt. What kind of tags do you have in your pocket? So I have my regular uh, Michigan tag, so two uh, bucks, the uh, restricted and the uh, regular tag, along with a couple doe tags. They provided a doe tag for us here, management tag. So we got uh, everything's on the uh, on the menu this morning. We'll see what we can get. All right, sounds good. We're here for a disabled veterans hunt. Uh, everybody here is uh, a veteran in some form and, and everybody is disabled in, in some way or another. Uh, some veterans are you know, obviously disabled and, and some have injuries you just, you, you don't see. Um, you know, sometimes it's a, a mental uh, injury or, or disability and other times they're, they're physical things, but just because I, I have all my limbs and, and look able-bodied and healthy doesn't mean that I don't have some sort of injury incurred from service. My injuries, um, you know, just accrued through service time uh, mostly, but uh, a lot of orthopedic things. And, you know, I've had um, a hip injury, a back, which led to a back injury, uh, shoulder injury, ankles, wrists, um, elbows, and those types of things, mostly orthopedic. But uh, you, you kind of add all those things up, and each one takes a slice at, at uh, who you are and, um, and, and creates more of a disability over time. Well, we only saw that one little doe fawn on the morning hunt here, but on the other side of the thicket in hunt area number six, veteran Jim Wandry and his guide Ralph Kegel were celebrating success. Jim had a doe down within sight of the blind. Well, I was sitting there 
looking out and here come a, a buck came walking by. It was too far out to shoot and the doe was following it. I got the doe. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. And she's laying right there. There she is. <laughs> this is my first deer with a bow. Really? I mean, really. And I've been hunting with a bow for years. Oh, really? I've had shots. They're too far off. You know, but that was about it. Nice. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank you. Her. Thank you. Ralph Cagle was here as a volunteer and representative of the Southeast Michigan Bow Hunters chapter of Safari Club International. Over the years, the chapter has raised millions of dollars to donate to veterans, youth, and disabled hunters across Michigan. At dinner, Matt and the team made a new game plan for morning. We are uh, we're shuffling some people around, trying to reposition some blinds and uh, move people into to better spots where the deer are moving and, and where there's more activity and more action. So hopefully. Uh, some of the spots are kind of cold right now, so we pulled guys out of those cold spots and trying to get them on uh, where the deer are. So. Josh never did see a deer the first evening, so on the second morning, he moved to a ground blind on the backside of the thicket he hunted yesterday. As a lifelong viewer of Michigan Out of Doors TV, Josh appreciated his time in front of the camera. I'm here as a veteran representing the other uh, eight veterans that are, are here with me today and, and kind of as their spokesperson filming this and, and showing the, the state and, and really the world what, what goes on here and, and the opportunity that's been presented to us by, by Camp Grayling, all the, uh, the sponsors that make this happen, the volunteers, uh, you know, we're very thankful for the opportunity to get out here and, and um, partake in, in the outdoors and enjoy, you know, what God has to offer us. Well, God offered us a good look at a couple of deer, but they were too far away for a crossbow shot. Over in hunt area number seven, Terry Rockhold was enjoying the success of a filled doe tag. So Terry, what happened? You were here hunting on the ball field, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, they came out of the corner of the woods there and about 25 yards and I just took the biggest of the four. <laughs> nice. Just around the corner in blind number nine, Bud Smith and his guide Larry Stafford were celebrating their successful hunt with another mature doe harvested this morning. Hey here, Dynamic guy. duo. So Larry, <laughs> what's your version of the story? Well, we got a call from Blind 8 that there was those headed our way, and we sat down and Bud says, there they are, and she was up by the dirt pile, and she was standing <laughs> out there eating, so I got the doe bleep up. I said, hey, you know, she's too far yeah. for us to shoot, so I hit the doe bleep, and she came right down to really? us. Really? At 32 yards stop, and she got a broadside shot. Oh, and man. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> what a wonderful day. I had to leave after the morning hunt, but sure enough, Josh was able to drop this beautiful buck on the evening hunt. Congratulations to all of our nation's heroes who were able to take part in this great event here at Camp Grayling. Meanwhile, Jordan Brown headed to another veterans event in Jackson County. The Fallen Outdoors is a veteran run organization uh, we cover all of the United States here in Michigan. We have a few staffers um, and we get, we get veterans out into the woods and into the water to get them hunting and fishing. So we do this to help with the um, veteran suicide is, is our main goal. 22 veterans a day, that number's been rising. Uh, we try to get guys out, get their mind off of the struggles that they deal with um, after service life, get them out in the woods get them out on the water and, you know, give, give them something to look forward to, something to be happy about. The Fallen Outdoors has helped to get more than 700 veterans into the field this year alone, and most of them are coming back for more. So when we get guys out, we get a lot of, uh, we get a lot of feedback how just relaxing, um, getting, getting our veterans away from the everyday hustle bustle of, of what they're dealing with. It gets them out into the woods, for instance, and they're able to, uh, you know, just step back for a little bit and, and clear their minds and see that there's people out here that, you know, support them and love them and we're here for them. Our turnaround on trips is phenomenal. Anytime a guy goes out or a female, we have a female veteran lead in the state that gets our females out, so male or female, but our turnover rate, anytime, we've, we haven't had anybody come in and say that they're not happy, they don't want to get back out, they look forward to it, they flood the site to try to find the next trip that they can get on. I enlisted in 2006 in the Army National Guard as a uh, motor transport 
operator and very quickly after basic and AIT I went to a infantry unit out of Detroit and quickly switched my MOS to infantry. A few months later I was deployed to Iraq where I spent about six months and one day I woke up and I could not move the left side of my body and I told my truck commander about it and he basically said we're, we're going on a mission man you gotta go and uh, so I, I completed the four-day mission with the same symptoms going on the whole time um, when we came back to the FOB I was medevaced to Kuwait th uh, for a CAT scan that came back inconclusive and then medevaced again to Germany for an MRI and a spinal tap and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis since I was 21 um, been out since 09 and uh, just living with MS trying to do more stuff like this this trip was all about spending time outdoors but we were all hopeful that a buck would show up in one of our shooting lanes. In the meantime, we were all enjoying a beautiful night in the deer blind. This is my second time hunting period. Um, I've been going to a few of their fishing events um, over the years and uh, they, they asked me very graciously to, to come and do this today. And this, I'm very out of my element, but um, I think I want to do this more often, so thank God for, for organizations like the TFO um, for putting together things like this for disabled veterans and veterans in general. This is literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It just feels surreal that I'm here right now, to be honest. It's just a good way for myself with PTSD and MS to really just almost meditate and be tranquil of just not worrying about your daily life and just being able to like a friend of mine not too long ago worded it as every time you cast you're like playing the lottery you don't know if you're going to get one or not and this year alone has been very more so of me going outdoors more and doing these kind of things i love it it's just it's amazing well we did have one group of does work their way into range but the buck we were hoping would follow never did show up special thanks to the folks at the fallen outdoors for all they do to get our veterans in the woods and on the water. If you'd like more information, you can find them on social media or at thefallenoutdoors.org.
Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around on next week's show. We're going to check out the December elk hunt that happens here in Michigan. Always an exciting time. And if you'd like to see where we are and what we're up to, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out if you miss it here on PBS. And make sure you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. we got some good stuff coming. And as we kind of wrap up this year and look forward to next year, it's always a great time to be a sportsman here in the great state of Michigan. And this time of year is no different. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's on the web at jsportinggoods.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars from top pros. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie.